it's lies, more lies, and statistics. Therefore, it's important for journalists to understand how others are manipulating data. It can be manipulating during data gathering, analysis, and visualization stage. During the stage of data gathering, it's important to pay attention if you're dealing with small data sample. Imagine you have one apple, and then you get the other one. You grew by 100% in your Apple stock, which means if you see very harsh percentage growth, which seems unbelievable, check if data sample is big enough to make such conclusions. The other sector where someone can attempt to manipulate with data is analysis. Oftentimes, we want to seek if some variables are connected. For instance, low vaccination rate is due to low level of trust in government. It appears that correlation is not that obvious. Did you know that the number of people who died by sinking in a pool correlates with number of, in how many movies Nicolas Cage participated? Do you think these events are connected? I don't think so. Therefore, before jumping to conclusions, think if what you see is really causation and not just coincidental correlation. The other stage where people can manipulate with data is through data visualization. Always check scales. If on y-axis you see very sharp line spikes, perhaps it's because the y-axis doesn't start from a zero. In 2017, Riga City Municipality published how much people in various cities need to pay for their heat bills. It appeared that Riga was the cheapest one and Cesis was the most expensive. And it looked like that difference is fourfold, whereas in reality it was just by 20 cents per unit. That's because access didn't start from zero. If you're dealing with graphics that are using pictorials, check if they are scaled right. If you see that a frog is scaled by the height and not by the whole area, it could be the case that it grows taller but also wider, and it looks much more bigger than the value it tries to represent. And finally, when you're dealing with interviews, think if politicians are not cherry-picking in data. When Obama was running for his second term, during debates with Mick Romney, he claimed that within 30 months of his rule, 5 million jobs in private sector were created. Though he forgot to mention that before there was big economic recession and about 5 million jobs were lost. Therefore, the net growth of jobs in private sector were just above 120,000. Be aware that if you torture data long enough, it will confess in anything. Therefore, be mindful of what others are presenting to you as data-driven arguments but also don't manipulate with data yourself, even when you are so sure about your conclusions, always show it to another person and ask if what you see is the same thing what the other person sees in data.